All right, Becca here, back at Parks Casino, Pennsylvania's number one casino. Today, we are behind the scenes at the Parks Grill, and I have executive chef Frank Perkel here to show you how to grill the perfect steak. Chef, what do we have cooking today? Well, we're back here in the uh, brains of the Parks Grill. We've got our grill ready. Uh, we have a marinated steak. Our steaks are at room temperature. Remember, that was the key to properly cooking your steak evenly. So I have a hot side of the grill. Beck, that's going to give me the sear on the steak. Piece. Get all those juices inside. Good. And then I'll move it over to a slower side to let it gently cook to the desired doneness that we want ensuring that it's nice and tender. I marinated these steaks in the same uh, balsamic peppercorn uh, recipe that we showed in the last tip. It smells so good. So I know a, a lot of people tend to want to go and touch that steak too soon. The, the secret is leave that alone for a couple of minutes. So we're going to let that rest for about two to three minutes. Okay. But again, it, it's really the uh, great marinade. The secrets are let your meats get to room temperature. That's gonna allow the muscles to relax. That's gonna make for a tenderer steak. If you cook a cold steak, it's gonna cook uneven. It's gonna be tough in one area, possibly another. So those, those little things can help you have a great steak or chicken breast, the same thing. Let them get to room temperature, don't cook them cold. We have the steak, it's uh, three, four minutes on one side. I know everybody, I want to keep turning it over, let it alone. I got it on the high side of the grill, then I'll move it over to the low to finish. Right now, again, we're searing in the juice. That marinade had honey, so you're going to get that nice little crispy outside. Nice. So that baby's starting to really look good. It's been on there about two, three minutes now. Getting ready to flip it over. As you can see, we start having a little bit of the juices coming out of the top of the steak. So you know that's gently cooking. The marbleization here, ribeye is a tremendous steak to cook on the grill. We're just about ready to flip it over when you start seeing those juices come up. So we're going to give it a flip. All right, so we just flipped over our steak. I'm going to leave this alone for about four minutes now. Get that, that side nice and charred. Picking up the heat a little bit, and we're going to move it over to our slow, slow side. That's just going to allow that meat to rest. Um, right now, in the softness of the meat, very soft is medium rare. So if you touched your, you want to get it to medium, okay. about the inside of your palm, that's what it should feel like. Now, if you're not sure about that, you can always use a thermometer. You don't want to really stick too many uh, thermometer in the uh, steak too many times because that'll allow some of the juices to come out. So right now we're just leaving it alone. I know that's very rare. We got about four minutes and then we're gonna move. All right, Beck, steak's been cooking. Coming right along. I can see it's about medium rareish. It's got a beautiful markings. You can see the caramelization from the honey in the marinade. I'm going to move that over to my slower side now. If you're touching that, about two more minutes and it'll be a perfect medium. That baby's looking good. You're getting hungry, aren't you? I am. All right. Well, this one's for you. You got to <laughs> eat the whole thing. In the world of steak, rare is 110, uh, medium rare 120, medium 130. We, we're looking at about medium-ish for this. Once we get about 125 degrees, we're going to pull it off. The second and most important part of your steak after cooking it is pulling off and let it rest about five, six minutes. That allows the juices to kind of slow down. If you cut it right away, the juices run right out and you end up with a drier, tougher steak. So it's the key. You, you spent good money on the steak. You've marinated it. You've cooked it properly. Now we want to let it rest. As you see, we're right past 120 where we want to be. And again, you want to take it off prior to the desired doneness that you want. If you took it to 130, it's going to go keep cooking to 140. And we'll check back in this in like a minute, and you'll see the difference. Back, what do you think? It looks very juicy. Just nice colors, juicy, 
That's going to be a great steak to eat. We're going to get to taste it in uh, another minute or two. We're just letting it rest. So we're back here at the Parks Grill. Our steak is finished, and Executive Chef Frank Perko is going to show us how to pair it. Steaks are looking great. And what I've done was take some different colored fingerling potatoes. I cooked them, added some bacon, capers, a little bit of Spanish vinegar. I roasted some heirloom baby tomatoes. It is summertime, we're grilling. This is gonna give us some beautiful color. This is a great side dish for our steak. And I'll Smell show good. you these colors a little bit more. Then I'm gonna put in a lot of fresh chives. And just a beautiful side dish to our steak. So if you see all those colors, that's a beautiful summer salad, potatoes, bacon, capers, which will be great with the steak. Get that out of our way back. And ladies first, as always, a beautiful steak for wow. a wonderful person who's put up with me all day. A nice, colorful salad, summer tomatoes, potatoes, steak and potato. True uh, steakhouse meal. So there's a beautiful meal to have with your friends at home or out here at the Parks Grill at the number one casino in Pennsylvania. And that wraps up another Parks Quick Tip. Thank you to Executive Chef Frank Perko here at the Parks Grill. See you next time.